to never enough cruising. Not so much a how to this morning, more of a um, let's help if we can. This weekend just passed, uh, we were notified, or well not notified, we saw on Facebook that a boat had, uh, was reported as sinking up at Crofton Pump House, which is where we are now. Um, at the time they weren't asking for help. CIT came and flooded the pound back up, which is what caused the, the boat to tip over, um, which is quite common on this stretch, as we'll show you in a minute. The owner of the boat got back to the boat on Tuesday, a couple of days after the incident, to find there was water inside the boat. It had taken on water as they refilled the pound, unfortunately. They then asked for help anybody with us a pump to pump it out which we have on our boat so over Tuesday night um, conversations went on and we said we would move our boat the eight miles and ten locks the um, boat in question isn't a narrow boat it's, it's a, a steel cruiser and the consequences of what happened are it was moored in this pound that you can see here, above lock 60 of the Kennet and Avon Canal, which is the start of the flight of six locks going up to the summit from the engine pound. Now these pounds are only short. From here there's another lock just around the corner, which I suppose four or five hundred metres maximum, and it's not that deep. Um, the mooring isn't brilliant. There's, there's a sloping bank on, on the towpath side. Um, the owner of the boat had moored the boat just about where we are now and um, had to go and see family. Sometime a few days after he left the boat, an incident happened with this pound, whether it be paddles left up by a boat going through or um, just the locks not being operated correctly or just leaking as they do. We can show you that later as well. So the level of the pound went down, the boat tipped over on its side because it's a V-bottom. Um, CR2 were informed, it responded pretty quickly, I believe within an hour, and rang the owner of the boat and said, is it okay for us to refill the pound? He agreed at the time. The pound was reflooded, but unfortunately the boat was stuck in the mud and took on a bit of water. Not too much, but enough to ruin the inside. Um, another boat just behind it, if uh, Amanda pans round, succumbed to the same thing. Um, I believe the boat was abandoned here in April according to CRT, or the information I got from CRT. The pan then dropped a few months later, as it did last Sunday, and the, the boat tipped over. This is this little GRP cruiser here and it's been like it ever since. So it's now been here eight months, seven, eight months, and it's now completely swamped inside. I'll pull this out later, but as you can see, there's a float that's uh, decided to come adrift. And we end up in somebody's prop, so ropes there, so I'll pull that out presently. Um, this one, CRT have reported it and as you can see they leave little envelopes that are tie wrapped to the rope, to the mooring ropes uh, in case the owner comes back and can see what's going to happen. This one will be lifted out by CRT and I would take it disposed of. The locks on the flight are getting worked on on the stoppages this winter, uh, started in January, which is not a bad thing because they've been leaking for a few years now. Ever since we've been using this canal, uh, we've always had problems going up this flight of six locks to the summit. The summit itself is fed by the pump engine and electric motors, which are on the towpath side by the lake about 100 yards in front of us. The motors are getting moved this year during the stoppages over to the other side 
just by the uh, where the bins are. So the boat in question, we as I say, we travelled eight miles and ten locks. The owner of the boat and uh, a couple of friends of his helped us through the locks because we were coming to help them. Um, we moored alongside it, just up above that boat. Got the pump out and pumped the water out, raising the boat off the mud and allowing it to be moved by hand down through the lock and is now moored alongside us in the engine pound and we're awaiting the owner to come back today so we can continue to help him remove the last remnants of the water that's inside. The water in the engine room covered the engine. Another job for today will be to try and get that started by uh, checking the sump hasn't taken on any water and a good clean up of these alternator and the starter motor. But that's a job for later on when it turns up. As you can see the boat is floating now. Let me show you what the locks are like on the flight. We we'll just walk over and see how this one's leaking. When the pound is full, there are no over um, by weirs on any of these six locks. All you've got is the envelope hole at the top. Uh, the water flows over that when it gets to a certain level and then that, that will pass down into the chamber and leaks out through the bottom of the gates as you are told to leave a paddle up open. Yeah, our boxes are floating, you're not the only one with strange! Let's just take a walk over and look in the chamber. Actually this one's not too bad, I've seen a lot worse than this. A lot of these locks are being worked on this winter. All these locks on this flight have to be left open, don't they? Left empty. Pound. Empty. The lock left empty and the bottom paddles left up. As you can see, one of the paddles is open now, so any water that drains into this chamber can get down into the engine pan, which is where they take suction for the steam engine, just over behind the bins there. Yep. That's where the suction hoses are. And the electrical pumps will be taking the suction from there as well. But all these locks coming from the summit should all be done the same as top paddles down. Once you, once you use the lock, if the lock is full, you empty it and leave the bottom paddle open so the water can drain down. The top gates are left shut. But people don't under... Some people can't fathom out what they mean by bottom and top paddles. The top paddles are these here, those white stanchions either side of the lock. The bottom paddles are on the gates, they're gate paddles. And as you can see by the sign that's on that lock gate, it says, please leave top paddles closed and bottom paddles open when leaving this lock. Now if that is done correctly, the system works well. But when you open be it one paddle or two on the bottom gate, as we have at the moment with one paddle, and the top paddle, it drains the pound above, and then that has to be refilled. Well, the summit is probably a good mile away from here with six locks in between. And uh, on Sunday, I believe there were three pounds empty. So what went on, I don't know. I wasn't here, we don't know. The word is that paddles were left up or the gates uh, the, the locks left incorrectly when leaving and the paddles dropped uh, the, the pounds dropped so at the moment we've got the boat moored alongside our boat so she's in a bit more deeper water for you to work on isn't it yeah she's she's a v bottom and just where our boat is where the back end of our boat is is a bit of a sandbank and if we put that one in, she, she may ground again if, if the, um, this pound does have a tendency to go up and down a bit. We brought her alongside because it's easier to work on with the pump 
because we have the, we use the electrics of our boat and one really for security for the other boat because we can't live on it at the moment. It's totally inhabitable. It's a shame that these things happen. Unfortunately the owner didn't know that the advisable it is advisable not to moor in any of the pounds between here and the summit. And even the summit has a habit of dropping quite a bit. Which we found out. We found out. Oh, it did, and it stopped here. Yeah. It's alright. We've gone down a few inches from that battery, looking at that battery. Yeah. Some of the boat hook or something, you have to hold this like that, so I can lower it down. There was a boat, there was a boat hook on top of me boat. Gearbox or the engine or whatever, because you get a little bit of leak. That's the film across the top. But as you pump out the water underneath it, that oil then, as you can see, goes over all the ledges, it makes everything slippy. So it's just been, been sucking all that up with nappies. Well, not nappies, there's actually. Yeah. Puppy pads. And, and nappies. Oh, nappies and puppy yeah. pads. There you go, look. So, nothing's gone into the canal. No. Nope. And got the old little stick there, which has been used. So, it's taken a few days to get to this stage. Yeah, we're on canal time now, aren't we? Well, yeah. yes. <laughs> However, um, as you can see, it's all looking very, very good. I'm just going to try and get this bit slippy up here because we had a bit of an icy day today. Can't see any other uh, debris in there. Just show you. It's a good job. Look, completely different to oh, there's another down there. the last bit. And Same at the front. Over here. Over looking here. good. Yeah, pumped out in the front cabin underneath the floorboards. And that's how we're doing because he's doing it. Look, clean it out so nothing gets put into the canal. And if you get over there, you can just about make out. So it's looking good, isn't it, Brian? It certainly is. Looking better than it did at the beginning of the week. This was full up yesterday. Level to the top. Level that out. So that's good. And, uh, We've come in the morning and put the hot air blower. Hot air blower on. It's, so it's looking out. pretty good. There's a little bit down there. But... So hopefully, you know, have a go at turning, turning the engine. engine over. We've checked the oil level in the engine. There's no contamination there, so the oil that the water hasn't got into the engine. Um, we've checked the gearbox, it hasn't got into there. We've turned the engine over by hand using the spanner on the front of the crank and she turns over. So that means there's nothing in the bores to compress and damage the engine when we try to start it. Which we can do if you like. We get this out. Right after the engine being three quarters submerged, you reckon? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, 
story was, as we've explained before, hand emptied, or was emptied by mistake. Boat tipped over, water got into the boat. This engine space was three quarters full, and so we've got rid of all of that. We've got the dirty oil that was on the film on top in different containers. We've put nothing into the canal, so we haven't contaminated that. Um, spent a few days drying it out, all below, there's still some to go. Then we've checked all the oil levels, the engine didn't have any water in it. She was free to turn using a um, socket on the crank. We turned it for its full rotation, so none of the cylinders had any water in, thank God. Because the water didn't quite come as high as the air filter there. So it didn't get into the top either. The gearbox um, has got a very small amount of water in it, but um, there's a slight leak on that anyway, so that'll come out. Um, the next thing, we've checked the wiring on the starter motor um, and found one loose connection, so we've redone that. The battery, the starter battery, which is just behind Brian's leg there, is that to get a brand new one. Exactly the same as that one. The other one wasn't that old, was it? 18 months. 18 months. Um, the water level came up to the two terminals, short it out completely, zero volts. So that one's knackered, ready to go down the scrappy. Um, so now we're at a point we're ready to try and start her up. Everything's been checked. So if you want to start her up, Brian. Okay. Let's see if the baby works. Brian, Brian, you better say what boat this is, because it's as viewers will probably gather, this isn't a narrow boat. No, this is a Dutch cruiser, Bon Vibant. So maybe it was on that Kenneth Naven boaters group. Seen what happened, they know the story. The Bon Vibant now lives again. Lives again. Yeah, she certainly does. Yeah, there's a few things got damaged, wasn't there? Yeah. Um, the stuff, Starts with the battery. Yeah, I mean the flood damage, um, to the battery, so that's had to be renewed at quite a large cost, actually. Um, there was actually personal items. Talking about so that battery, Brian, let tell a slight plain story about the battery, the two prices. The battery's original price was £447, but they had a Black Friday deal going on and came back at £220. Which I think is still quite extortionate. Yeah. I, yeah. Mind you, it's a decent make, so. Well, the battery that I bought 18 months ago is identical, and it was 180 pounds. So, That's right, so it's gone up 40 it's pounds. Gone up 40 time. pounds. Yeah. Or yeah. has it? Or, or did they put all the prices up for Black Friday and then they sort of dropped it down? Yeah. No I'm doubt. not saying which company it is. It's a well-known <laughs> car park <laughs> supplier. But it'll be okay when Brexit happens. Right. <laughs> They'll so. have to change the name then. So, um, yeah. So the story now is, what's going to happen next? Um, well, the engine and I will be run to bring it up to full temperature and give it a final check over. Um, the rest of the bilge, we, we are drying it out with these good old puppy pads, um, and then we'll lay fresh ones in so we can find out exactly where the, there's a, a, a dripping leak on the gearbox, and we'll find out exactly where that's coming from. And um, you believe you might have a water leak on the engine somewhere? I'm losing a little bit of um, coolant, yes. It'll yeah. cause a, a patch on the puppy pad. And then we can 
investigate better to find out where that comes from and just tighten it. probably just need to tighten up. So, Brian, over to you for the last word. How do you feel now? Ecstatic, <laughs> <laughs> really. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's never it a good thing when you see a boat go under the water. Well, I wasn't expecting to find water in it to start with. I knew it was going to be a lot of mess to clear up with tipping over on the side. But it's actually devastating when I came into the water as well. But uh, it's all drying out nicely. The boards at the front there are looking better. You can see they're drier. So it's not going to be that long before I actually move back on board. No. Brilliant. And there you go, have a job. Big thanks to John from Amanda. Yeah, you're welcome. I'll be able to get on with my oil change now, won't I? <laughs> yeah. Okay, well, thanks for watching.